everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with my paper tubes that I made last night. In my previous video, I showed you how I roll paper tubes. Very easy, quite addicting, and there's a lot we can do with paper tubes, not just covering boxes or whatever. And I'm going to be showing you several different projects. One is we can supposedly make paper bowls with the paper tubes. Haven't done that yet, so I'm anxious to try that and we can do weaving, there's all kinds of things. So subscribe, subscribe, even if it's just for a little while, then you won't miss what I come up with. I will link down below to the previous video, go watch that, see how to make the tubes and come back. And then I had uh, said that I wanted to cover something but I wasn't sure what. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cover this box that I showed you before. I was saving it to do um, like fabric scraps and Mod Podge, but I did that already. So this is the box I used to save a lot of the like two and three and a half inch um, salvages and sticks. And then when this box is almost filled, it goes on eBay. And I keep track with these little pieces of paper on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I'm going to lay my tubes this way. I'm going to show you how to connect tubes, something that I didn't mention in the previous video. Let's get started. All I need are my paper tubes and a glue gun. I've got my glue gun right here warming up and I've got some extra glue sticks. And then I have the tubes that I made last night. I laid a few of these on the box and just did an estimate to see if I have enough, and I think I have enough. I cut up almost a whole magazine. This is what I have left, so we do certainly, well, I have a lot of magazines. We certainly can make more if we need to, but I don't think we need to. I've decided I'm going to Mod Podge, not paint, for this project because I kind of really like the colors. I, you know, was using a glue stick at the end. The glue stick I don't like as much as the white glue because the little corner tips don't stay as stuck as I like. All right, let me empty my box into another box and then um, we're going to get started. Not sure if I'm at the right angle, but we will see. Everything rolls off this table, everything. I'm going to lay the tubes in this direction and I want to show you and anything that's all like a lot of white I'm going to put back in the bucket for when I do a paper tube painting project. Now we can see one of these tubes is not long enough it only goes to here. Now when we roll paper tubes Generally, one end is always a little bit bigger than the other. In fact, we want that to happen because that's how we can join tubes. And that's really helpful for when we start coiling paper tubes to make bowls or baskets or whatever. And um, I tend to roll mine a little too even, and that's not a good thing. So let me see if I can find some that... Oh, this one, see? This one has... This end is much narrower than this end, so that's good. So I'm going to take this, and this one kind of has a narrower end, and I'm going to stick the narrow end of this tube into the fat end of that tube. See? And I ripped the paper a little bit. That can be the glued side. And now I can decide um, where I want to put this on the box. I could put it... Let me back you up a little bit. You know, I could put it this way and then trim here and then that would give me, you know, a nice piece left over. Or I could shift it if I want to have like a lot of red, a lot of purple. And I'm going to start at the bottom though. That'll be easier. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't done a big project like, well, yeah, the oatmeal container that I did, that was pretty big. I don't know if I can get away with doing a line all the way across. And I want a little bit of the both colors. And as if I had to have that ripped paper part on top. I wasn't planning on that. And that's stuck there now, so I'm committed to ripped paper part. That's going to flatten right out when I do the Mod Podge. Look, we've already got one tube. Now, if I'm concerned about color showing through in between, then I could have painted this box 
first, even just one coat of whatever color. And that would have been kind of cool, but I just didn't feel like taking the time right now to do that. So let's put two more together. I'm not going to be overly fussy about, um, oh, look at this one. That really fits in there. I'm not going to be overly fussy with um, my color choices. I am going to try to leave some longer scraps on the end just so I can have that. Now again, you can push them up together and if you have like a tube that's narrow and goes to wide, well the next one you put could be wide going to narrow. I'm just going to put another line of glue stick. It doesn't have to be every you know, inch of it. I'm already out of glue stick. Well, that one was barely there to begin with. And let's lay another one right now. Very easy. You can do this with white glue, but you're going to be waiting. Oh my goodness, I'm enjoying this so much. It's really pathetic. <laughs> this is my enjoyment in life. Oh, I like that one there. Let's see, push it this way. Right there. Huh? All right, let me finish this side. I'm going to stop for a second. I want to make sure I'm kind of doing this straight. Not that it really matters. And yeah, I'm trying to save these end pieces because I was hoping some of these end pieces would be long enough to be the connectors. So let's try trimming. And when I'm doing the glue gun, I'm like maybe gluing an inch and then skipping and then an inch skipping. I'm not making a whole strand of glue all the way across because I don't want to have to use a hundred glue sticks. Scissors. I'm going to just snip these off. Hello, where are you? Why is this harder than I thought? Okay. Is this going to be long enough if I want to add it um, skinny into not skinny. Let's see. Oh yeah, see? That gives me another whole tube. So that's awesome. Let me trim this side. Oh yeah! When we snip, though, that wants to unroll. So when we make the tubes, if we plan on snipping them, it would be a good idea to put like one line of glue all the way across that strip as we're rolling. That would be a good idea. So let me just finish this and I'll try to do both of these long sides and then I'll be back. Yeah. I'm done one side and I'm working on the other side. I'm almost done. And I had switched to using white glue and if you have time to let that dry, you know, you're going to go through a lot of glue sticks on a big project if you um, are using just a glue stick. The thing is, is that with the white glue, it does take a lot of time to dry, and so it makes it um, hard to snip the ends. I like to snip the ends right away, but then they can unravel. With a glue stick, they're just really stuck on there, and they're not going to unravel. So you can figure out what works best for you. I just find if I have a lot of ends sticking out, it just, it's kind of hard to trim them. So I'm going to finish up with the glue stick. There's another one. And I make sure I have a nice little glob on each end. It doesn't take too much in the center, just a little bit, but each end so that when you stick your tube, and I'm not even ready, is this going to be long enough? It is. Um, those two ends are secured by the glue stick, which allows you to trim right away if you want to. And that's what I like doing, trimming right away. So let me just finish this side. Things are getting messy around here. I did one end, and I want to tell you, this is the first time that I don't do something that's just going around in a circle with, you know, the tubes all sticking up. So I had to trim these, but when I roll my tubes, I don't have glue across the whole piece of paper, so the tubes unravel, so that's a difficulty. 
when you lay your paper down to roll, like I said, if you put a strip of glue, whether it's glue stick or white glue, I suggest white glue, put that on, and that way, all of that paper is glued at some point. So that should help with the unraveling issue. Here's what I did. I took my tubes, terrible step to have to take, but I did it. And I put a little bit of white glue on it like this, and then I just smeared that white glue all over the tube. And then I just put it on the box like this to dry. Took only a few seconds and it allows me to snip through. So if you have tubes already made, you can do that. Now I'm running out of tubes. I only have two, so I'm actually going to use some of these newspaper tubes. I just want to use them up. Some of them are painted, so they're not likely to unravel. And all I do is I snip one end so that it's squared up, and then I just put it on my box where it's going to go, and then I put my scissors where I want to cut it, and I cut it. Now, you could just do that to a whole bunch of these. I just tend to glue it right away. And uh, where's my glue stick? My glue gun. And I put a lot of glue on each end and just a little bit in the center. And then I just place it on there. It's not lying flat to the box because the box is kind of curved, and that's okay. So again, I'm going to just put my tube where it needs to be, put my scissors where I want to cut, cutting. I have been putting some white glue in the center. Just smearing that around a little bit. I'm having so much fun. And let's put some glue stick there, and there, and there. Like that. Let me just finish this side now. And this is how I finished these corners. It's not the best job, but I like it better, where are you, than just leaving it like this. You know what I mean? Jelly bean. So all I did is I um, took a piece of whatever. Let's snip the bottom. And then kind of like where I need to be, filled this with $7 worth of glue. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then I just hold it and, and, and I, burn, I burn one finger. Ow! Oh my god. I have so many glue threads everywhere. But it is. It's fun. Come on, stop it. And then if you need to trim a little bit, you can. So there's one side. I like it. All right, let's do this guy, and then we're going to be done. Oh, I didn't burn myself. Now it's time to Mod Podge. I love the Mod Podge step. I'm going to start out with my matte Mod Podge, but I would like to finish this with gloss just to see. And I will have links to the Mod Podge down below. And I'm going to use a very wide brush. Skylar actually had cut that a long time ago. And uh, uh, if your Mod Podge cover sticks, just soak it in warm water for a little bit. Look what I'm doing. I'm just going to actually pour some on here. Whoa. And spread that around. Oh, I have my oven set at uh, the lowest it goes, which is 170 for me, 170 degrees. And uh, I will be putting this in there for about 10 minutes to let it dry. And I did want to mention, that doesn't affect the hot glue. It's not hot enough and it's not in there for long enough. So even if you use a glue gun, you can do the mod podging and drying step. I have a tube right here that separated or has a little hole or something. I actually could probably fix that by putting a piece of paper there if I wanted to. Just going to do a light, well you can't really see, a light coat. Oh, can I fit this brush in there? I cannot. And just poured a tiny little bit there on the top. 
You can't see me doing the ends here. Okay, I'm just doing a light coat. I'm going to let that dry. And then the second coat is always easier. I know I'm completely off camera. I'm coming back here. I'm just doing these end pieces. A little bit of Mod Podge. Whee! You can buy this shit by the gallon. I'm going to have to start doing that. I'm trying to not put the other side down because it's wet, but... Okay, that's a good first coat in the oven for about 10. I put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 170 degrees and I took it out, let it cool. I did another coat, took it out. Now when you take it out after 10 minutes, it might feel tacky, but that's because it's warm. Take it out, let it cool. It takes just, I don't know, 30 seconds to cool and it's not tacky at all. I do see a couple places where my my um, tubes didn't quite meet up. You know, this is still, I think, uh, a pretty good job. I think I've gone from third grade level crafts to maybe fifth grade. <laughs> Gloss. Now I have a little container that my big brush can fit in. And I don't know, I'm going to try to get away with one. What a mess. I make such messes with one coat. And I'm going to, let's see, I'll just show you a little bit. I'm going to just, ooh. I don't know. I think that the mat has quite a bit of sheen to it. Now my brush is a little bit wet because I rinse it every time. So it doesn't get all stiff. But that's okay. So maybe I will do two coats. So let me just cover the whole thing. I'm putting it back in the oven and uh, letting it dry. I'll see if it needs yet another coat. And when I'm done, I'll tell you how many coats this baby has. I am very happy with this project. I just love how it turned out. And it was so fun. And remember I told you there were two tubes that had separated and there was an actual space, like I could have stuck the stick in? I took a piece of paper and just put it on top and Mod Podged it. It's that little red piece of paper right here. You'd never know. And then if you ever have tubes that are not stuck together, it barely shows for me, but I have a, you know, a significant space there. You could always just roll up with paper, just a little skinny tube and stick it in there. I'm so happy with this, and I use this box all the time. Now, I am going to make something for the inside. Um, I don't know if I'll do that as a video. Maybe, maybe not, because a lot of the little salvages and stuff like to get caught under here. It just happens to be the box that I use to uh, keep those things until they make it to eBay. I am going to take some pictures right now coming up. Stick around, watch that. Thank you for sticking through this whole video, assuming that you did. Not everybody does, but I appreciate it when you do. I'll be back with more soon. Bye!